Hello, welcome back to my haunted library. It's Regina. Today I have a review for a true crime book called Small Sacrifices by Anne Rule. Now, most people probably know this book or at least know the case of Elizabeth Diane Downs. Diane Downs was a young mother of three children who was convicted of sh killing one of them, shooting all three of them, killing one of them and uh, attempted murder and assault on the other two. And this happened in Springfield, Oregon, back in 1983. Diane Downs was driving on a back country road in Springfield, Oregon, at night with her three children to sleep in the car, when she claimed that a shaggy-haired stranger waved down the car. She stopped, confronted this man, and he proceeded to lean into her car and shoot all three children, plus her in the left forearm. She then drove the children to the hospital, into the emergency room, and one was dead on arrival, that was little Cheryl, and two lived with extensive injuries. Diane's story, however, fell apart in the next year, and she was convicted of murder and um, is now incarcerated with, uh, for life plus 50 years. At the time, of course, it was a huge news story. Maybe with the internet now we hear more of these stories, but at that time, like that case and the um, Susan Smith who drowned her two children in a lake, these were huge stories and I remember them on the news. It seemed like uh, it was incomprehensible that a mother could do this. Of course, uh, we, there are more cases we've heard of now, like this Casey Anthony and uh, Andrea Yates, an, another uh, woman who uh, drowned her children in a bathtub. Um, she was found to be insane, guilty, I guess, but insane. Casey Anthony was acquitted. Yeah, so this story kind of gets into that horrific type of crime. And uh, what I really liked about Ann Rule's take on this was, and, and this is what I think what makes her such a good crime writer. I've written I have not read all of her books. She's written a lot of books, but I've read the Ted Bundy one and a few other ones. She's really good at getting into the psychology of these characters and not just the killer, but also the other people around. So she really finds the drama. And uh, and this was also a reread. I, I found this book, I was just like so disturbed by it. Just It's been a while since I read it. And, um, and of course I've seen the movie with... Uh, Farrah Fawcett back in the day it was a TV um, series and it, it's really good and she is really good in it she uh, is kind of underrated as an actress and she she really she's not of course she doesn't look like Diane Downs I mean the Anne Rule is always describing Diane Downs in this book as being beautiful I think that's a bit of a stretch she didn't look like Farrah Fawcett she she's kind of an interesting looking woman um you know, attractive, but just, but something odd about her. Like in a lot of ways, she was uh, well. There was a lot odd about her. Let's face it. But in in a lot of ways, she's described as kind of like a shapeshifter. She could um, seem to be different things to different people. For example, she could seem very like Madonna like, not the pop star, like like a mother type. You know, very demure. And then she could also be kind of like shooting guns in the backyard behind the trailer park and listening to Duran Duran. And she, she really had sort of like different personalities. The whole story really got under my skin. The whole premise is set up with, you know what happens and, and it's kind of like, you just wanna know why. Like why, why would she do that? How could she possibly do something like that? And, um, and this time around, you know, reading it, I, I, really, I, I really had to put the book down at one point and, and I started to cry. Thinking about um, the, the girl who died, little Cheryl, um, as a middle child myself, I have a lot of sympathy for Cheryl because it, it's obvious from the book that she's just like completely neglected, completely unloved, um, right up to the point where her mother shoots her dead. And there's this one heartbreaking scene that I had forgotten about where she, a, a couple days before Diane shot the children, it was almost like... Um, there had been an, an attempt on their lives. Diane had bought this unicorn statue and had their names engraved on it with a date. And the date was, I think, a couple days or a week before the actual killing. So that 
according to Anne Rule, according to the uh, detectives, although Diane never admitted any of this, she still denies it to this day, that was supposed to be like a memoriam. So this unicorn statue was like a symbol of their death. And that's why it was engraved with their names and the date. But little Cheryl had gone up to a neighbor and said that her mother scared her, that she was afraid of her mother, that her mother had uh, taken them to the woods in, out in Oregon and had jumped out from, from her from behind a tree. And, and you know, the neighbor didn't report uh, Diane, but th to me that just is so heartbreaking. Like she was trying to reach out to an adult that she was afraid. She was afraid of her own mother with reason. And then the other two children were seriously injured. Uh, the one, the oldest girl, Christy, was shot in the chest. I mean, it's like a miracle that these kids' lives were even saved. And uh, the little boy uh, was shot in the spine and is paralyzed as a result still. And Diane Downs, is it's weird because it's almost like she used her fertility in, in, in some way kind of like as a way to manage her emotions like she felt comfortable being pregnant she had a total of like six pregnancies so she had three children one was an abortion uh one was a surrogate and she gave up as a surrogate mother and the other was one that she had when she she got pregnant again during her trial she just randomly went out and kind of picked up a guy got pregnant and then after she was convicted gave birth and the baby was put up for adoption and you can really go down the rabbit hole of this story because uh, the, the daughter of, that was adopted grew up and discovered that Diane Downs was her mother and wrote to her. And you can uh, find out about her on, on YouTube. She's She's been on a couple shows about what that experience was like and kind of hoping that she doesn't have the genes of this horrible monster. I do also appreciate the fact that Amrul kept a lot of the focus of the story on the victims and their suffering and... Um, and just and their identities, you know, like you you don't just forget about them because they're the victims, and these and this uh, crazy person is getting all the attention. So I, I felt like I I spent some time reading this book, just kind of probing this uh, strange woman's psychology, and uh, kind of always searching for reasons why. And and really, when you get down to it, there's really no reason why uh, her motive for killing the children was that uh, she was having this affair with this married man and he had expressed to her that he didn't want to uh, be a father to her children, which was probably just him trying to let her down easy or something. You know, that is one, I think that is one thing that did bother me about the book is that this this man, his name's Lou Lewison, and um, which I don't think is his real name, but Diane was like obsessed with him and had a tattoo of him, uh, uh, heart, uh, roses with his name under the tattoo. And um, he's, Anne Rule kind of has him as like this helpless victim to Diane's seductions. And I think he gets off the hook a little bit too easy for that. Because it does seem like that he definitely led her on. He, you know, he had this long affair with her. He moved in with her into an apartment at one point. So I don't quite buy that, although I don't hold him at all responsible for what happened. Diane made like one bad choice after another. And when she did this, terrible act. She was in a, a really a desperate place, but there's no excuse, of course, for what she did. Yeah, so so probing into her psychology was a pretty crazy just to experience it. And although I have to say, you know, I finished the book, I, I took myself out to dinner and I had my Kindle with me and I, I finished the last part of the book and I was, uh, you know, maybe it was the wine I was drinking or the fact that I was sitting in a a bar with all this there was a game going on a football game and I was kind of surrounded by like these rowdy men but I found myself having some sympathy for Diane like when she's in prison and she escapes and climbs over the prison wall and manages to escape I mean they caught her but she managed to do that I kind of was like this woman is like a freak of nature like there's something so despite her insanity and her, her horrific deeds there's something kind of like just willful extremely willful about her and uh, and physically strong. Just to pull off kind of the stunts that she was able to pull off, there's something, it's not admirable, believe me, but as I was reading that, part of me was like almost rooting for her to escape. I can't describe that and why. Um, and I was a little weirded out that I felt that way, but um, I, I think it was just because she was such a fascinating character. By the end of the book, I felt like I knew her. 
Everybody says you sure were lucky. Well, I don't feel very lucky. I couldn't tie my damn shoes for about two months. The scar is going to be there forever. I'm going to remember that night for the rest of my life, whether I want to or not. I don't think I was very lucky. I think my kids were lucky. If I had been shot the way they were, we all would have died. But at night, when I close my eyes, I can see Christy reaching her hand out to me while I'm driving. And the blood just keep coming out of her mouth. And that, maybe it'll fade too with time, but I, I don't think so. That haunts me the most. And I'm ready to uh, let that relationship go now. If you love true crime, I would highly recommend this book. It is not for the faint of heart. It's uh, pretty horrific and pretty heartbreaking too. So uh, that's my review for Small Sacrifices. Thanks for stopping by my haunted library and I'll see you soon. Bye.